time for another team profile and projection. And today we are doing the Miami Marlins. My name is Jimmy. I got Jake with me. Trevor, as always, producer Bug Bug Dude. This is Talking Baseball brought to you by DraftKings. Thank you very much for tuning in as we continue on our journey of doing one episode a day, every day, until opening day. This is episode number, insert number here. Miami Marlins, our audience ranked them to be the 18th best team in Major League Baseball this season. They made the playoffs last year, the bottom feeders. They won a playoff series, feeling good about themselves. Fish with arms, Jake. Mm. Can you tell me who they lost, who they added, and what stayed the same? Yeah, the 31-win fish they lost. Couple young guys they had been excited about Jordan Yamamoto, Jose Urania. Their times with the fish are done. Ryan Stanek, he's out. Brandon Kinsler out of the bullpen. The tarp is off. Steven Tarpley Duggar talked about him before. Brad Boxberger, I bet, buddy. Uh, Cervelli retires. Logan Forsyth, Sean Rodriguez, they're still out there. Uh, and Matt Joyce, Trevor Plouffe's Matt Joyce, he's out. You're out, four eyes. Who they added, Adam Duvall. Had a huge year last year. Anthony all about that base. Dylan Floro comes over. John Curtis. Let's get into the bullpen guys from both World Series teams. Ross Detweiler, Adam Simber. How about that? Zach Pop. Uh, so a couple MLB arms in there that, that they'll be adding to kind of what's already the fish's strength, Trev. But for now, can we talk about that lineup? Yeah, they had a couple guys here kind of rebound, have big years last year. So we're looking to see if they can capitalize on that and do it again. A catcher, another former team of mine, Jorge Alfaro, former Phillies dude, got massive pop. Uh, speaking of pop, at first base, Jesus mm. Aguilar, who had a disappointing 2019 but killed it in 2020. He was kind of the the bottom feeder's guy. He was that that mantra that they had. He was the the embodiment of it. At second base, we got John Birdie, shortstop, our John Boy Media, sort of Miguel Rojas. He'll be joining Chris Rose on our Chris Rose rotation show. Plug that one. My and bad. At third base, boom. Brian Anderson had a really good year last Jackson's. year. Left field, Corey Dickerson. Center field, Starling Marte. And in right field, Adam Duvall. Pretty good lineup. Jim, this is what we're waiting for. Mm. Tell us about those arms on the fish. They got Sandy Alcantara. He's good. Pablo Lopez. He's good. Sixto Sanchez announced his presence with authority. Ellie Iser. How do you say it? Yeah, you're all there. <laughs> Hernandez. Trevor Rogers, Daniel Castano, and Braxton Garrett. Who's that? Sure. Relievers. They got Anthony Bass, Yimi Garcia, Dylan Floro, Richard Blyer. Zach Pop. Mm. Zach Pop's fun to say. I was mm. happy. I don't know. This team's decent. I wish they weren't in the East is the biggest thing. They they made the playoffs last year. Um, they won a series, but they were lucky, right? Like, weren't their batting stats actually bottom of the league like below average they had a crazy season with the corona stuff but uh they made some noise they had some fun i don't know sixto sanchez is is the, the fun guy to, to remember sandy did pretty good a lot of unearned runs on sandy mm. defense letting him down they beat the cubs in the playoffs they what are your, what are you thinking about they did, man. It was it was a fun year for them, and I I think all off season I've been telling myself that all these other NL teams, NL East teams, have gotten significantly better, or you know, ha have made moves, or you know, even if the Braves stay where they are, they've they've been the dominant team. Um, there's a lot of young guys. There's a lot of young guys still on the way. Uh, I I would love to hear, you know, hey, yeah, Jeets, let me in the building and let me know what you're thinking, because I mean, Jazz Chisholm. Uh, he should be Excuse on the me? way. Uh, oh, yeah, you bet. J.J. Blade, Max Meyer, who was a third pick in last year's draft. He was supposed to be one of the, the most MLB-ready guys. People thought there might be a chance he'd get the call last year. Does he get the call yes, 
this year or are they saving things for next year? I think that's going to be really interesting to see because this lineup's fun, man. I, I didn't realize how good Miggy Rojas was for them last year. Some MLB guys, Starling Marte, they picked him up at the deadline last year. That was a really fun thing. On paper, I like this team. I think when we start doing our TPP game of like, if this team was in the Central, what would they be? I think I'd be saying high praise. I just, what's, what is this team ceiling in the NL East? And I think that's some real, that's us staring some eye glances at each other. Would you be willing? Let's do it negotiation style. Okay. Would you be willing to make their ceiling four? Yes. Okay. I agree. Trev? I mean, we're talking ceiling, ceiling. ceiling. I like high ceilings. I like high ceilings. You are big into cathedrals? Is anyone going three? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go three. I I'll believe three. in disaster. Okay. And I believe in the Nats the Phillies, or the Mets. One of those three going disaster mode on us. I don't know which one. I don't know which one. I think the Braves are pretty steady, Eddie. They're going to be good. Yeah. I think all those teams can also finish first. The disaster ones, I said. But I just believe in disaster. Even the Phillies? Yeah, I think the Phillies can win the division. Okay, all right. Maybe. All right. They're ceiling. They're <laughs> let's, ceiling. Let's, let's see. We'll save that I for the Phillies right TPP. I love that. Let's save that for the Phillies TPP. I don't know, Trev. I mean, where are you at, man? Where are you at, big dog? You guys know I like to base my predictions on pitching, specifically starting pitching, and that's kind of, you know, they, they did the damn thing. And I know I call guys, and I don't call them. I guess Blake Snell did it first, but I also like to call them slapdick prospects. Mm. You got a bunch of prospects in the top 100 and that's kind of where they're at so to me jim i think you always make this point with teams when they have a bunch of guys near major league ready it's like how much are they really going to be going after this season and we're talking from a front office standpoint clearly the guys in the field are going to go try to win every damn ball game because it's their career but where are they are they going to get help are they going to bring some of these guys up to help the roster and 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 take away uh, that extra year of control? Like, probably not. Like, Jeet's your guy. Like, he's he knows what he's doing. I, for all the stuff I talk about Jeet's, like, he's he's done well with this franchise. Got him into the playoffs last year. Has bolstered their farm system. I just don't think they're really going to go for it this year. And, I, I, you know, I for some teams, I don't like saying that. For this team, I do like saying it in a, because of the division they're in. Very, very tough division. I just don't see them. They also have no one on the books. Like a Cu- couple years ago, a couple years from now, we're going to be talking like, dude, the, Mar- the Marlins are awesome. I don't think it's going to be this year, but I do. I mean, we're not there yet, but when we look at their over under. I have a, I have a pretty damn big lean. There. John, before you go to the books, Trev, what you're saying, uh, we, we look at fan graphs for a lot of stuff. Their top uh, nine prospects are expected to be playing major league baseball this season. So, you know, are this, they going to bring him up? This I Jeter, hope so. yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting talking point on on the fishy season. A lot of guys getting looks. Mm. Who's JJ Blade? What a name, JJ Blade. Have I we th- done this on here before? No, I think he was this year's draft, so maybe we did. That's um, such a good name, JJ. Two thousand nineteen, he was the fourth overall pick. So I mean, and that's the thing, like with these with these guys, these are real draft picks on the way. JJ Blade, that's a. Fourth JJ pick, Blade. JJ Blade. We do like that. Max Meyer, three overall. Like these are, these are the real deal. When do they get the call? What do their, what does their minor league season look like? What does the MLB season look like? I um, I'm, I want to talk about Miguel Rojas if you will let me, please. Your guy. So he does have a podcast on the Jumbo Media Network, the Chris Rose Rotation with Chris Rose, right? But I was singing his praises well before this even happened. It was like a nice surprise when Rosie told us he was going to tap him in to be a co-host. Because this dude's cool. Yeah, He's fun, and he does not swing and miss, and he puts balls in play. And he had a hell of a year last year and a good year in 2019 as well. They call him the leader. They call him like Donnie Baseball Light, or they have some Donnie Baseball nickname for him. But Miguel Rojas, the... His whiff 
rate, right? So here's some analytics for you, mm-hmm. Trev. His whiff rate on fastballs the last two seasons, 2019 and 2020, has been 10%. League average whiff rate's 25. Dude. Get and he hand does, eye, baby. And, I mean, it adds up because his hard hit rate isn't up there. His exit velo isn't up there. He's only in 2% of barrels, so he's not squaring them up. But he's just putting the ball in play, and it's been working out for him. Kind of a fun watch. Old school baseball a little bit. Uh, I like him. Don't throw him a off speed pitch either because he fucking crushes those. Mm. He had a 545 batting average against off speed pitches last year. Um, he consistently, last two years, hits like breaking and off speed better than fastballs. It seems like I haven't watched a lot of his full at bats or like day in, day out. So I got, I asking Marlins fans, does he just sit breaking and react fastball? That's kind of what the. He can. It's kind of what you the stats that. say. Yeah, you gotta a lot of you gotta not care about getting your A swing off all the time. Like a lot of the new hitters, they just do it's A the swing thing. the entire time, so they have to sit fastball and either spit on or or throw the bat at the breaking. It seems like he sits hammering off speed and breaking, and then throws the bat and gets weak weak contact, but base hits on the fastball, which I think is fun. We can go in depth on this. I mean, look, an A swing, I get it. I understand why guys want to put your A swing on the ball because you get paid to slug. Mm-hmm. Mm. But A swings only work when you're feeling A plus. When yeah. you're not feeling A plus, you got to make an adjustment. And I don't say go up there and sit breaking ball, but sometimes when your cadence is that of an off speed pitch, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking go up there looking for a 70 mile an hour pitch. If you bring your cadence down to like, you know, in the 80s, 82, 83, 84, it slows you down a little bit. And yes, are you going to get maybe beat on some heaters? Sure. Mm. But you're going to be more on time for other pitches and you're going to see the ball a little bit longer. And I think, you know, when you're a guy uh, who plays shortstop, and you don't really need to slug, like go ahead and take that approach, use the whole field. And I'll tell you what, some of the sluggers, the big boys, they need to do that too. Stop worrying about getting your A swing off all the time. You're strong enough. Barrel the fucking ball up. Mm. I wish we were at Sorry, spring training. I wish we were at spring training and beating up on some heaters right now. Mm. I, I think mm. this team, and I said this with one other team before, and I don't think the Reds had this, who we, who, who we just talked about, because they've got some money on the books. I think this might be your trade deadline team. Uh, Starling Marte is in the last year of it. Uh, Corey Dickerson is in the last year. Miggy Rojas has an option for next year, I believe. Uh, Jesus Aguilar. Uh, well, he's in our, so you could do some things with that. Brian Anderson's a really good baseball player. That deserves to be said. Really solid third baseman for them for a little while. Um, almost everyone in the bullpen is a free agent. Uh, next year or ARP. So Adam Duvall, uh, 7.1. So I, I think this year is going to be a year of discovery for the Marlins. Find out who are going to be your in-house stars. Find out, is Sixto Sanchez the truth, or is he going to have some growing pains this year? Uh, Sandy Alcantara the showed truth. us something last year. Pablo Lopez. So I I think you find out what you've got. You're like Jim said, the books are as clear as they can be, and we don't expect the Marlins to spend, spend. But you know, you can increase the margins with some tactical free agents. And I think if you trade, you know, Starling Marte at the deadline for maybe a bullpen piece for next year or whatever it is, I I think you start lining up next year and you see how this NL East is going to sort out because it's man, it's going to be a madhouse. Jerry Madhouse. I was just looking at Sixto Sanchez's repertoire. 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 He threw his change up more than any other pitch. Kind of interesting. There's a young guy coming into the league. He does have that Pedro Pedro change up. He models it after him and all that shit. But then Pedro's pinky is basically a piece of rubber band, mm. and he can't do that, that thing. Pedro can bend his pinky back all the way to his wrist. This is as far as mine goes. He's just got to break his pinky. Just break your pinky, Sixto, and then maybe you can be even get a better pitcher. whip on the change up. I didn't think he did that. I thought he was taller usually, than he is. He's six feet tall. I thought he was five. like I thought he was like six foot seven. I usually hate saying this about teams, but they're in such a perfect position. And Jeets, man, got to give him credit. As as all the other NL East teams are spending, kind of signing some big contracts, and we know these owners don't want to go over that that threshold. Here the Marlins are not even close to it. 
and they got all these guys, these really, really high pedigree um, draft picks coming up, and a lot of them are pitchers. They already have pitching at the major level. I mean, they are stocked with talent, and they have money to go spend on free agents and supplemental pieces, and it's going to be really interesting to see. They've got part of the part of the equation done already. Now it's up to Jeets and the rest of the front office to go supplement the talent, go out and get the big free agents. Still got to develop some of these guys, but they're in a really, really good position, you know, in 2021, 2022 to make a splash. And people, let me tell you this. I told you guys this before. Florida and Texas, those are free agent destinations. Mm -hmm. They want, people want to go play there. If you put out a good team and can show a future, guys want to go there because you get more money. You save money. I also they, they think a lot of things working for them. I also think and Miami's awesome. Trev, mm-hmm. they're in such a position where like if they are playing really well and outperforming and they're somehow in a fight for a wild card, their payroll is so low right now at sixty two million dollars that they can go at a guy like they did last year with Starlin Marte, who has a just one more year. Where some of these yeah. teams that have already spent so much money, they're not going to pick up a guy who's got another year attached to him. Where the Marlins, they added Starlin Marte, so they're paying him twelve and a half million this year, and they don't care because that takes. They're still shed. They still shedded twenty million from last year to this year, and they're going to do the same next year. So if somehow they are, if they do find themselves like attacking the wild card, I think they're in a position to add one or two guys that maybe these big clubs that have already spent so much money would be more hesitant, but that's kind of like a fun best case. No, I, they're, they're in an incredible spot. And if you're a, f- I don't know how many, you know, fans are going to be watching this without a team, but if you're a person just getting into baseball and you don't want to hop on a bandwagon, this is the team. This is the team to go and say, I was a fan before. Cause they're going to, uh, okay. the next couple of years, we're going to be talking about. Oh, okay. You, before, before I was, a that fan was the key word yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Cause Hey, yeah. I'll I'll say this, like Jim, you said, you know, chaos in baseball can happen pretty easily. I said I believe in disaster. Quote what are, me correctly. What are the Nats? Chaos is a ladder. What are the Nats going to look like? I mean, you know, they brought in Schwarbo, Schwarbo one year. Josh Bell, does he have one year left or is it two? Um, you know, those those giant Scherzer and Strasburg contracts get worse by the day. You know, we were so excited about these Mets. Frankie Lindor hasn't signed the extension yet. You know, that was supposed to be the whole thing. Marcus Stroman signed the qualifying offer. What does Uh, Cindergard look like? I got bad news for you. What's that? The Nationals only have three players on the books in 2022. But they're big players, and they're on the books for big money. And, hey, they might want to lock up. They might where is their the, farm system at? They might want to lock up that Soto guy as well. So, And the Phillies, they've got some big contracts. So I think you let this year sort itself out a little bit. Let the chaos happen. Get a couple more prospects or things that help increase the margins. And then, hey, maybe Jeter's playing some serious chess. Trev's guy, Jeets. We get a couple new CBA rules. Maybe there's a salary floor. And maybe the Marlins can make a splash or two in free agency. I don't know. Chestnut checkers. You want to hear a full lie? The 30th farm system. What's that? Say it again. Nationals have the 30th ranked farm system. Out of how many, though? It's a good question, Jim. It's a good question. Because that's where you really find the answer there. Yeah. Do you want to hear a cool lie? Yes. <laughs> Jeter texted Chris Rose. Said, really glad that you hopped on with John Boy Media. I love those guys. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That is a cool lie. I think I might have just myself have taken Jeets out of our world. I've been talking too much crap. But, but now I'm giving him credit. I'll give credit when credit is due. I Man want, of honor. I want this lineup when we do TPPs next year, to have the most turnover. Write that down. Write that down. Turn, can I also, turnover since I've been, like a British since I've been going like this with the Marlins, okay. can I go like this with the Marlins? Maybe. Okay. What's that mean? For the audio only people, Trev moved his hand up like, like a grising graph, and then, he, and then it was up. a plummeting graph. Escalator going down. Yeah. yeah. So you wanna, now you want to be mean to the doing. Marlins. Yeah. Their uniforms are the worst in baseball. Mm. Stop it with that. Stop it with whatever, whoever you hire to design your uniforms, they're fired. Go do it again. I know it's only been a few years since you changed your logo, but go do it again. You don't think they you fit Miami? see what it says. You don't, 
what are you mad at? The color scheme? I don't like. I don't like the colors. I don't like the color. Oh yeah, color scheme number one. But don't I you like think the, like the, the neon Miami lights Marvel. vibe kind of fits Miami? Miami Vice neon lights. It, do, it doesn't. It doesn't work because there's no neon coming out of the jerseys. Go full Oregon Ducks. Because, you know, if you're gonna live in that area, you might as well go. I think they tried to. Yeah, I, that's what they tried to do, but they didn't get there. And like, did we didn't go to their spring training facility, did we? But if you go to their spring training facility, there's a a logo on their building. It says Marlins, I think, but you can't read it because it's like black on black. <laughs> Weirdest thing I've ever seen. I just that it really, I really Weirdest can't stand. It. So seen. for all the great things they're doing in Miami, change the unis. Go back to that awesome teal and black you had. Yeah, those are kind of. Do you like uh, light black, dark black, glossy black, or matte black the most? That's the Yankees pitching coach. Mm, I think like dark, dark is my favorite. Mm, yeah. Like midnight. Zach, ask the him his favorite hole. color. Dark black. He kind of just whispers. Zach said that? Dark yeah. Black. Yes. Zach, what's your favorite color? Dark black. Yeah, like like a black hole, like it's sucking everything into it. I'm Max's like, mm. fun stat: Sixto Sanchez was the only pitcher in all of baseball to rank in the top ten of average velocity for all three of four seamers, curveballs, and sliders. That's called stuff. Throws everything fast. It's over under. I'm looking at it right now. I don't know if you guys are. If you want to guess, you can. If you don't, I'll just tell you. I'm I'm getting a guess at seventy point five. Also, I looked at it. Yeah, I know. I I I could tell by yeah, the way. I already looked at it too. Turned. I told you I have a huge lean on this. Go on. Over for the audio only Taking people. Trevor has pointed <laughs> pointed up. up. Pointed up. We do. This is over. a podcast. Well. <laughs> Big lean over. Maybe sprinkle some cash for for old Trev on that. I like that a lot. Over. Is this a ninety loss team? In their division, and then the AL East as well. Yeah, AL East isn't as good as we think. Who's better, the Blue Jays or the Marlins? Comparable. No, mm. you just lied. Yes. So maybe it's I closer than you think. No, no, dude, the Blue Jays are really good. On paper, when? Yeah, on paper this year. 70, 70 feels low, though. You know what I'm going to like do? Like, you can be a bad team and win 72 Dude, games. Crazy. Yeah, 70 does feel low. I agree with you there. It is but a it, tough it's... division, but this is a good baseball team. Yeah. Like, these guys win series. If you run into six stone Sandy on a good day, you're going to win a series. Give me the over. All right, I am, uh, I'm showing a random video of Miguel Rojas and whatever this is. Oh, uh, he grounds out. It's a hit and run, though. It's a nice play by Rosario. And a beautiful play to get him. Yeah, I'm not going to. because the other teams that's, take the step up. That's the Marlin season. They do something kind of good, but they're just going up against You know what that is? You know what that is? That's like uh, a 75-win season there. Done. Yeah, so there you I'm go. The We're all on the over. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Put it down. Mark it down on your sock. Mark it down on your sock. <laughs> I forget where you've been marking those down, but just make note of it. Go Max Meyer. Their pick from last year. They even talked about no, bringing that I'm guy not rooting for him. during this season. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what? Hey. I didn't hear that. I'm just joking, Max. I, I know nothing about you. I just said I wasn't head. rooting for He's him. He's a redhead. Trevor. You got to like that. A redhead named Max. I had a redhead named Max in uh, high school. Madam. You guys love Clint Frazier. Hey, wait. His initials were MM as well. Oh, shit. University I had of a Minnesota. redhead at Max in high school. Go first. That's crazy. Fish with arms. John Curtis. If you can till the land, you can marry my daughter. That's All you gotta do is put fish in the soil, guys. Put fish in the soil. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Or a farming podcast. Oh, I'd love to listen to a farming podcast. Just for a second. 